And we'll start off by Dimitri from Klura, which is a Swedish word for klurig, perhaps. But yeah, I shouldn't ask you that. But um, but uh, the stage is yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dmitry. I'm a um, cl uh, cloud engineer domain leader at Clura. Uh, I also act in a project team leader of OpenStack Ansible project, and I'm currently a member of, uh, of, uh, of OpenStack Technical Committee. Um, but let me probably uh, say a couple of words of what we are doing in Clura and uh, yeah, what operations we are actually um, are performing. Uh, so Clura is a European cloud. Our headquarters is based uh, in uh, Sweden, in Karlskrona. Uh, we have a public cloud uh, offering, uh, which consists of uh, multiple regions spread across the uh, EU. Uh, we also build in private clouds uh, upon request, uh, which uh, might be placed either on uh, Permis or uh, on our infrastructure. Um, one of prominent offerings uh, of our company is a compliant cloud, so it's uh, service that is designed for uh, highly regulated industries uh, like uh, uh, health uh, sector, uh, finance, uh, public sector, and so on. Uh, thus, we are certified according to ISO standards on information security, quality assurance, uh, business continuity, and uh, environmental protection. Um, with some background, uh, let's proceed to the topic and uh, let me describe a bit uh, how Zool uh, meets our needs and what our operations are actually. Uh, so um, as we do have solid amount of open various OpenStack deployments, uh, we store a uh, configuration for each of its, uh, of each deployment in its own repository. And we call it a region repository. Um, I will refer to this term quite uh, frequently, I guess, during this talk. Uh, then um, we do maintain a set of generic tools uh, like uh, Ansible collections and um, uh, some hackery uh, that are stored in their own uh, repositories. And they're used not only for OpenStack, but also for other parts of uh, our businesses, let's put it this way. Um, Clure is a relatively big organization, I would say, and um, uh, we have multiple deployment vectors, we have multiple teams. Uh, and uh, since we want to enable uh, teams uh, to succeed and to enable them uh, for progress, uh, we do try to respect uh, their requirements. And this is how we ended up with uh, three Git management systems. Um, so the question stands how we should test all together. And I guess Jim uh, already <laughs> replied to this question. <laughs> um, but there were like multiple challenges with that because uh, it can start from authentication because all three of these uh, do uh, it in a completely different way. Uh, there is also network reachability and um, there is just uh, no way to ensure that uh, some change to push to like GitHub or GitLab will not conflict with other things. Uh, and of course another point that we want to um, test is uh, following uh, do not repeat yourself principle. So we want to store our code and maintain our code in more centralized way uh, without repeating ourselves in each repository. And uh, kind of this uh, leads us to uh, Zool usage, which uh, ticks uh, these uh, boxes more or less. Um, so the first use case I wanted to talk about is uh, manage and maintain resources. Uh, and other resources, I mean, um, practically anything that uh, can be inside OpenStack and that we need to manage as cloud provider. Uh, so a good example of that, that this would be uh, OpenStack images, OpenStack flavors, networks, uh, cluster templates, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, so having verified and regularly updated images as a public cloud offering is uh, really required and very important. Um, one way to do that, um, would be to just blindly trust uh, public available images that are built by distro maintainers. Uh, they are tested after all, right? So uh, no reason not to trust them. Uh, but despite that, we decided to go an extra mile. So we are building um, our own images using Disk Image Builder. Uh, this is um, a tool that actually is used also by Zool and by uh, Open Infra uh, to, to build images. <laughs> um, 
So uh, this is actually neat uh, for multiple reasons, uh, because uh, first of all, we can modify our images if that is needed. Uh, one example can be to align uh, SSH username to use uh, by default. And another can be like installing uh, drivers or license files inside images, uh, which is need for um, something like GPU offering. Um, so um, with that, we also produce images in raw format right away. So we don't need to like download it, convert it and uh, so on. And uh, having images in RAW is quite uh, neat and it speeds up uh, boot, uh, boot time for VMs uh, in case you are using uh, Ceph as a storage, of course. Um, but let me talk about how like uh, this pipeline, uh, or well, not pipeline, but this process works. So uh, we have a, a centralized repository um, where we store code and we, where we store generic definitions uh, of our images. Um, each image has its own uh, job defined. And in job, we dis, uh, describe what elements uh, for this image will be, for this image builder will be used. We also uh, describe like uh, deep version, um, dependencies and so on. Uh, so uh, job is triggered periodically or upon change of the job definition itself. Um, and uh, we also pull extra dependencies from uh, GitHub uh, and from OpenDev. So it's uh, Tempest plugins that, that we maintain. And uh, there are also custom deep elements uh, if these are needed. Um, so yeah, and uh, job uh, runtime looks relatively simple. Uh, so disk image builder is launched uh, with uh, arguments that we supply to the uh, Zool job. Uh, then uh, resulting image, which hopefully will be built and will not fail, uh, is uploaded to a staging environment. Uh, once in, once it, it is in staging environment, we prepare a Tempest config uh, and uh, execute Tempest tests, which does uh, create a VM from this image. Uh, it enters VM and ensures that uh, state is uh, as required actually, so that there are like you can SSH into it, you have required metadata set, you uh, don't, know, uh, have, uh, don't have uh, any packages to update and so on. Um, and when test passes, uh, this image is promoted to uh, artifacts. So half of the job is done. Now we actually need to uh, ensure that image is promoted to real regions from, uh, from that state. Um, because some of images uh, are designed only for specific regions, uh, we define promote jobs in uh, region repos. Uh, so this is decentralized. Uh, we have an um, image manager user uh, with a restricted credential that can upload the image and publicize. That's basically what it can do. Well, it actually also can delete the image, but uh, we will talk about that later. Um, so uh, with this centralized repo, we uh, don't need to manage code in multiple places. Um, but yeah, uh, so this job uh, fetches uh, artifact. So it, it actually goes to Zool API and uh, it asks for the last successful job. Uh, when it receives it, it fetches artifact and uh, gets um, metadata from it which is a uh, timestamp when image was created and uh, checksum. And then we compare it with currently existed, uh, existing image uh, that is currently available. If the artifact is newer, we of course uh, hide um, existing image and uh, make publicly available a new one. Uh, if it's the same, we just uh, go to uh, rotation process. And it's also, uh, we had quite some uh, hassle um, about hiding images because it was a bit tricky to find uh, the way how to uh, remove image without not breaking tools like uh, open tofu um, or heat uh, because they reference the image by uh, name or UAD. So we need to, uh, we had to make, uh, make it work. Um, and not recreate all VMs uh, under the next uh, run. So what we ended up with is marking images as uh, community ones. Um, 
in here this way and we keep uh, the image name consistent at all the time so when uh, image is uploaded it will well old and new image uh, will have exactly the same uh, name they will just have different metadata and uh, build time basically uh, another type of resource to talk about is probably flavors uh, so we manage flavors as well as uh, many other uh, OpenStack resources in pretty much similar way now. Uh, so uh, we use OpenStack resources role from OpenStack Ansible. Uh, it, this uh, role can be totally used outside of OpenStack Ansible with, uh, without any other bits. So it's uh, just where it resides. So it, but it's absolutely safely to run from anywhere. Uh, and we have another um, centralized uh, repository where generic definitions of flavors are defined. Uh, we store them as Ansible variables, and uh, once uh, this variable file is changed, we trigger um, promote jobs uh, for each region repo. To do that, we had to define promote jobs in a Zool uh, trusted project, uh, because otherwise we cannot like um, execute jobs for other repositories. Uh, it's not very neat uh, because uh, now we kind of need to uh, change it and uh, it's trusted repository so you uh, there is a limited amount of personnel who has uh, access to merge there actually um, but from other side uh, we need to change it only when we add new uh, region so it's pretty much bearable and we can live with that I guess um, and then uh, the region repo in uh, we, we combine all definitions that needs to be defined for this deployment um, and uh, yeah, basically run uh, the role, which does all that in pretty much sustainable manner. Um, so the next uh, deployment host consistency, and uh, I guess the question would be right away, what is deployment host and why it's consistency is so important? Uh, so deployment host is uh, an OpenStack Ansible, uh, well, it's not only OpenStack Ansible concept, but yeah. So it's a management instance uh, that is used to execute uh, Ansible uh, playbooks and roles against uh, OpenStack environment. Uh, the instance can be actually anything from bare metal node to a Docker container. Uh, it consists of two most important, well, if split it uh, to parts, if I may say. So it's uh, configuration files for specific region. Uh, which is stored like in region repository and uh, constraint Ansible environment. And Ansible environment in its turn, it's uh, pretty much a Python virtual environment where Ansible core is installed. And then uh, specific versions of uh, Ansible roles and collections um, and uh, Ansible configuration basically. Um, environment can be easily reproduced using bootstrap Ansible script. Uh, and it will pull and uh, install everything it needs uh, with overwriting uh, any user input if it was any. Um, but the thing is that we also pull uh, some our extra stuff um, from our GitLab and from Gary. Uh, and the question is uh, that we need not only to pull this but also to test it. Um, and Zool does really good job in testing all this content together um, from different sources. Um, so we always sure that recent update to any our uh, internal collection would not break uh, processes and uh, will not stall our uh, operations. Um, regarding deployment cost preparation on its own, we had uh, multiple options to do. So first would be just to build uh, a Docker uh, image and promote it to um, our internal registry and then pull it. Uh, but then uh, we still need to ensure that, well, it's need to be pulled and uh, that nobody runs anything inside Docker container. So um, next to that option would be uh, configure host as static node pool one. Uh, but it was too easy, I guess. So we decided to add external host to Ansible inventory during uh, job runtime. Um, which is actually probably quite underrated um, functionality in Zoo, and it might be uh, quite uh, handy in some use cases. Maybe it's not the one use case that is, uh, but uh, let's talk about it. Um, 
so as we're executing a job on external host, we actually don't need to have node set defined for this job. So we created another abstract, uh, abstr abstract uh, parent job. Um, we, yeah. Uh, and then we also have a region specific jobs which uh, define uh, host details. Uh, in these uh, child jobs, basically we define three variables. It's uh, host IP address, it's uh, SSH port, and SSH fingerprint of the host. Uh, and uh, we kind of need to prepare that host uh, before uh, doing this, so we need to create a zoo user. We need to uh, get SSH key for the project uh, from zoo. Uh, it's unique uh, per uh, project, and it's getting decrypted, uh, or it's getting like loaded to zoo only in the post merge pipeline, uh, like to secrets. Uh, so it's quite neat, uh, though I would still suggest to limiting access for this SSH key only to uh, Zool executor uh, IP addresses. Um, yeah, so we get this uh, public key, a public part of this SSH key, we put it to a rise key, we uh, configure suitors up to our taste. Um, and yeah, um, job, in job run, we actually execute two modules, uh, which is a uh, known host uh, to add uh, um, our deploy host SSH fig uh, fingerprint to uh, Zool known host and then adding host to uh, inventory which is val uh, valid during uh, job runtime. And then we basically can just reference to new edit, uh, new created group and execute pretty much everything towards it. Um, and in this case, it will be just a bootstrap Ansible script, which will do all our other, ma like all the magic we need um, afterwards. Um, the last, probably, but not the least use case uh, to talk about is hardware deployment. And uh, I've picked up uh, compute deployment as an example, because we do deploy computes quite frequently, and it consumes uh, quite some time uh, for operations. Uh, so we pretty much wanted to achieve full cycle compute deployment um, in a GitOps way. Uh, eventually we leverage uh, add compute SSH script from um, OpenStack Ansible uh, because it's actually quite extendable. Uh, so um, it allows to define pre and post actions that will be executed before or and after like OpenStack installation. Uh, these actions can be actually any uh, playbook uh, supplied with uh, tags, with extra variables, uh, with limits, and so on. Um, one of prominent uh, pre-actions that we have is a send API request to uh, MAS that will install operating system. Uh, then we also execute uh, our internal things like uh, uh, firewall authentication and so on. And, uh, in post tasks, uh, we actually do final tuning at host to monitoring and uh, basically getting it ready. Uh, but in order to do all that, we also need to pass argument, arguments uh, to add computer SASH script, uh, which will be um, like compute nodes, host names. Uh, and we somehow need to detect what these host names are. Uh, so to do that, uh, we can store inventory definitions in its own files. Uh, so, assumably we are adding like AO2 and AO3 uh, nodes uh, to the inventory. And uh, the job that will run in post-merge uh, is quite trivial, so it will just uh, take a diff of the last uh, commit and uh, will parse it. Um, and as output, will return our, um, us uh, like this just two no, names of nodes. Uh, and we run at computer SARS that will install OpenStack and so on. Um, so probably it's time to draw some summary uh, and conclusions how Zool helped us. So first of all, we nowadays we don't spend nearly as much time on uh, building new images or uh, ensuring that we have consistently uh, delivered flavors to all regions that need them. Uh, with that, we still have full control of what will be available where. 
Um, and this is especially important for our compliant cloud offering. Um, as parent jobs alone, as well as uh, most of the code is uh, stored in uh, centralized repositories, we don't repeat uh, ourselves and uh, save a couple of cycles and times for reviews on uh, modifying it whenever needed. Um, also, it would be very, very much more hard to um, do in a decentralized way because when you have a lot of environments, it's very easy, you, easily you can sleep somewhere to merge something, which means um, it will differ and might be uh, not consistent anymore. Um, automation also helped us to uh, reach uh, consistency on uh, how we uh, define tags and properties that are required by sovereign cloud's tag standards, uh, which also help for uh, cloud interoperability, but also makes just users easy to find the image or the flavor they need. Um, it's also extremely important that with Zoo, we are able to pull all our dependencies together uh, and test them without merging them. So this is really very neat uh, because before it was really uh, a lot of situations happened when we did some change to our internal stuff, uh, which uh, further on will break uh, operations and uh, stall everything. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, we, as we need to deal with uh, multiple uh, source of code, uh, it's all doing uh, like it's uh, bringing together all the pieces that we have. Um, and there are also a couple of shortcomings uh, for this as well. So first of all, um, there is not possible, as far as I know, at the very least, uh, maybe I don't know, Jim can uh, correct me if he would be here. It's not uh, possible to manage version of collections or install custom collections to Zoo Executor. And it caused very, um, very it was very troublesome when OpenStack collections migrated from version one to version two because modules were back were incompatible. So you upgrade in Zoo and you ended up with tons of uh, messed up uh, code basically, which you need to replace in one day and cannot do this uh, in advance. Uh, next, it's also tricky to debug or, rep or reproduce uh, native jobs before pushing a change, uh, especially uh, the ones that require post review functionality and especially in GitLab and GitHub modules. Uh, and the last, it would be really nice to have uh, Gitea driver finally reviewed. It's been a couple of years now, so uh, it's about time. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, please feel free to connect. Um, you can also check close on our services at your website or scanning this uh, code. And uh, very important note, projects and topic were open source and community driven. Uh, so any contribution and help and, uh, I don't know, your feedback, um, very much appreciated. Uh, join like uh, communities and uh, yeah, after all, we are all open infra. Thank you.